I just wanted to start this off by saying I don't harbor any hate towards Mahler or the Critical Drinker. I just have some things that I thought were weird and some of the statements they said, and I just wanted to say something about it. Okay, welcome back. Today we're going to be discussing some of the Critical Drinker's opinions on Kenobi. Now, a lot of people have been critical of the show, including myself. I've enjoyed certain aspects and I've disliked certain aspects, but the drinker came out with two videos from his podcast called Open Bar 17, at least as, as far as I can tell that's what it is, and I'm going to be talking about some of his opinions and giving my reasons as to why I think that a good amount of them are wrong. So without further ado, let's get right into it. There, there's uh, this episode was just a long cavalcade of fucking idiocy yep. on Kenobi's part. Like, the, the fact that, you know, he waits uh, the, when they get stopped at the checkpoint, <laughs> which is the most ridiculous thing ever, because it's just a laser grid across the road. You could literally just walk around it and there's nothing <laughs> to stop you. You'd rigor their mistake was showing us the wide shot with the two <laughs> big obvious <laughs> gaps on each side. It's like, why? So... Right at the beginning uh, is the first problem, and he says that the checkpoint is too small and you can just go around it. So let's take a closer look at the checkpoint. So he's right, it's low, and you can just walk around it. Well, there's one small problem with that, is that it's meant to stop vehicles, and even in real life we have checkpoints like that that exist to simply stop vehicles. and they also have guns so if they wanted to stop foot tra traffic that's how they would do it no, excuse me why would you do that because like when they when he's killed everyone and he has to get through he's like oh i don't know how to disarm the laser grid he's like pressing the buttons and then he just shoots it to disable it i'm like oh okay the, the reason he's doing that is because he obviously wants to take the truck and drive it through yeah. But then he just starts walking through. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> Why are you planets, so small. This episode was filled with. Yeah, so I. That's one of the opinions that Drinker has that I agree with. I don't know why. I mean, he kind of agreed with what I said when I was like, it's meant to stop, you know, large traffic. In real life, it would be stopping like cars, tanks, and vehicles like that. And in the Star Wars universe, it's meant to stop speeders. And yeah, I, I have no clue. So he's right on that. Like establishing something about power levels and fighting and then immediately subverting it. You have a stormtrooper that's high up on a tower looking at Kenobi. You have several stormtroopers around him with guns and you have a probe droid in front of him, which are capable of shooting you. It's like, hmm, these odds are against you, Kenobi. What are you going to do? And he just goes, oh, I'll just shoot them all one by one and I'll win. It's like, oh. Okay, then three stormtroopers show up later, and he immediately surrenders. Oh. So, I brought this up in my review of the episode, and I originally as well thought that it was a weird thing. I was like, why would you, why would you do this? Why would you even consider this as an option? And the conclusion that I came to, and of course this is subjective, but I just figured, well, Leia's right there, and... You know, it's different in the original encounter because they were more fo so focused on him, but they're standing like even closer than they were when he had first started fighting with the stormtroopers. So, I don't know. It's really up to interpretation. Oh, what, God, why? I hate, <laughs> like, I hate sure. There's a scene where they tell him to get down on the floor. They don't tell him to drop his weapon. So he gets down on the floor and he's holding his gun, pointed at them <laughs> on the <laughs> floor. Yeah, and that like, shit was crazy. This is like basic anymore. safety guys. No one cares about their own safety at all. He gets out of the truck and everyone just, no one pats him down. What? No one tells him, have you got any weapons or anything? They're just standing there. This guy's probably armed, but you know, yeah, here's, here's the comes course. over. <laughs> okay, so my thoughts on that is Mapuzo doesn't really seem like a high priority planet you know it's not like your corellia or your coruscant or a deep core planet and as far as i can tell it's more so in the outer rim i could be wrong on that but it's very sparsely populated so 
it could just be the troopers just being incompetent and that's the reason why they're stationed out on Mapuzo and not on Corellia or Coruscant or somewhere in the core. Because, like, I know we're jumping around all over the place, but to yeah. put this into context, fucking, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a cerebral hemorrhage <laughs> and describe this. Yep. So they, they've been taken to this planet where um, they've been told in vague terms that someone will be there to meet them and help them out because Kenobi is there with Princess Leia. She's under threat. They're getting pursued by the Empire and the Inquisitors and stuff. Their, their contact doesn't show up. Kenobi immediately concludes that they have to get the fuck out of there, um, and so they, they hitch a ride. And wouldn't you know it, a bunch of stormtroopers get on board the, the, the big truck with them, and none of them recognize him, apparently, even though his picture has been circulated amongst all the the um, assassins, the bounty hunters, the Imperial troops, everyone knows exactly who they look Uh That was on Dayu, not on Mapuzo. They had no clue that Kenobi was on Mapuzo, and that was why the pro droids ganned him. And then, like, the next scene, or like a couple scenes after, they're like, oh, we located Kenobi. They weren't looking for him there. They were. That picture was a picture that already existed. It's a picture from the Revenge of the Sith era. I mean, you can see from how clear and clean it looks, how, and I mean, like, how clean shaven he is, and things of that nature that like this isn't a recent picture this is a picture that's been out there so it's not unreasonable to assume that maybe there's just a big catalog of jedi that have been not confirmed to be dead and because of that there's just so many that they're not going to instantly recognize one looking for it. they look right at him they don't recognize who he is fuck this show and he says the name later now a thing i do want to throw in is that he was like probably like the third or fourth most famous jedi you know probably swapping places with anakin it's just him yoda and mace so it is a little weird that they didn't recognize him but again i i really don't even have an explanation for that so eh. it was just my head almost legitimately exploded when he said leia <laughs> I think I made oh, a really weird noise. Yeah. I was losing my mind. I was like, how can they make Obi-Wan this stupid? That's so unfair. Are you sure he's even on this planet? They know what they're doing, Leia. They know what they're doing, Leia. They know what they're doing, Leia. Just when I think you couldn't possibly be any dumber. It, it's and like they, they, they are going under assumed names, and so the, the stormtroopers start questioning them about who they are, and of course Leia fucking starts blabbing her mouth off. And a Kenobi, without missing a beat, goes, Now I've stopped that, Leia. And then immediately goes, Oh, fuck, I've just, I've just snookered myself here. Yep. Um, and the stormtroopers are like, What? He said. So, uh, two interesting things about this. Uh, he says Leia goes blabbering her mouth again. That's pretty in character. I mean, the first time we see her, she's getting really snarky with Luke for no reason she's just like that and it makes sense for her to be like this from a young age now to me the scene where he slips up and calls leia leia i think that it was meant to illustrate that like even though obi-wan isn't as good as he used to be he still is able to think quickly on his feet and because of that he's able to get them out of this situation so it leia he has to try and bullshit his way out of this. It's, he would never make that kind of mistake. He would never be that stupid. Dude, it is like... I don't know why they think that Obi-Wan just never makes mistakes ever. I mean, he's made a ton of mistakes. and Even his training with Anakin and overlooking his relationship with Padme. Like, that was a mistake. Obi-Wan messed up and because of that, a lot of people died. Obi-Wan's made mistakes. Now, part of the reason Obi-Wan's so good is because he's able to course correct. And that's what I think this series is leading into. And we even saw it early on in Kenobi's life in Legends when he was going down a similar path as Anakin. And he was very rage-filled. And, you know, he was even letting his rage 
influence him in his fight against Maul. And when he lost the love of his life, Siri Tachi, at least in Legends, and not so much in canon with Satine, he sort of was in this dark place and he was able to course correct himself. That's just always been a strength of him. And you can't really course correct if you never go wrong. So, parody level, they're like, oh man, we're looking for like a Jedi, and Jedi usually wear robes and stuff, and Kenobi's like famous, and we've got a literal wanted poster equivalent of him, and he's walking around with some girl, and she's called Leia, because we would know that, because it's literally the daughter that's been kidnapped from Alderaan. They know all of this. It's like, oh! So, who says that Bail Organa has let people know that his daughter has been kidnapped? I mean, this could be something that lowers morale at, you know... on or Alderaan, you don't want something like that to really get out unless it has to get out, at least in my opinion. So I don't really know why you would, especially when Bale has decided to send a fugitive after his daughter. Like obviously he didn't track the, trust the Imperials to go after his daughter. He trusted Obi-Wan. So why would he let, like, the greater part of the galaxy know, hey, my daughter's gone and she's been kidnapped? Because what if an Imperial sees her with a Jedi? It's like, oh, the Jedi kidnapped her. Not only does Jedi look bad, that's also somebody else who's coming after Leia just in in hopes of a bounty. I, like, maybe if if we get Leia... We can get some sort of reward from Bail Organa. In fact, in the not, one of the earlier novelizations of Return of the Jedi, I remember Lando. Part of the reason he was helping out Leia was because he uh, insinuated he was like, well, you know, there's a lot of ways that uh, a princess can thank you after you help yourself, after you help her. Just basically saying, you know, he thought he was gonna. You know get a reward uh, i don't think i need to insinuate anymore but anyway just some thoughts on that wow we just bumped into a guy who looks just like a jedi and a little girl and he called it leia uh it's probably nothing yeah yeah nah it'll be fine it's Fucking, oh he, uh, it's it's the perfect example right which i've said before a character is only ever as smart as the person writing them draw your own conclusions from that gentlemen and they even say on the actual thing itself, oh, we always catch these Jedi, though. <laughs> it's like, yeah, what? Oh, we always catch them eventually. You don't know what he looks like, you don't know what his name is, and you don't know who he's traveling with. And they should How know on earth do it. Um, so this is probably just the thing that they are saying. One, out of just pure self-confidence. And two, to reassure Frecht and Luma and Orden, at least in their minds, of course, Obi-Wan and Leia. Just being like, hey, we got this, we're the Empire, we're the Empire for a reason, don't even worry about it. Expect to find anyone on the planet. Oh, it's so embarrassing. I hate this. This is the thing, like, this would be a great uh, time for him to do the whole force mind trick thing. You know, these aren't know. The people you're looking for. But he's mysteriously lost his force powers because this is a yep. thing which now happens in Disney Star Wars where people... Okay, so he's about to make another point, but personally I just thought that he wasn't going to go for the mind trick because he's been out of practice. People just cut themselves off from the force and now they can't do anything, even if they actually want to. It's like a new game. He started at level one and now he's got to slowly train, going one yeah, at a time, he... shooting... Okay, so this is a weird thing to me. Um... Let's say the critical drinker, right? Because I, I'm pretty sure that he edits his own videos and they're very well done, right? Let's say he just stopped for 10 years, right? And not only that, he had the weight of the loss of a loved one on him. And the loved one that he lost, you know, helped him with doing these videos. Don't you think that would take a toll on you, like, in your ability to do it? Like, if you leave a craft that you're doing all the time like like i said with the drinker making videos and you take a 10 year hiatus from that when you come back you're not going to be as good as you were 
There's a reason we say practice makes perfect. You have to practice a skill to keep it. Use it or lose it is a very real thing. You don't believe me? Pick a skill that you do often and stop doing it for two, three months. You come back, you're not going to be as good as you were. People with blasters before he, he gets his um, lightsaber out, like, what was it, Calcaton? I think I had to do yeah. that. You know what he's done? He's deleted his save files. So now he's punted <laughs> back to the beginning and he just has to do it all again. That's that's all it is. I, I, why? <laughs> Mower, help me out here, please. To explain how this is happening. What specifically? The whole show? or <laughs> The fact that he's just forgot how to use the Force. The fact that he's now like become retarded. Uh, um, the fact that Princess Leia, who's a 10-year-old girl, has to like help him out and tell him where to go. Just everything. Why? Why, why is this? I'm not exactly sure which example he's talking about. Uh, I might just like have to rewatch the episode and add it in just to jog my memory but for the most part i other than like waving down freck i don't i don't really remember anything like that but i could be wrong there. sure they want us to believe that he's really sad and that's why he's lost force powers doesn't really line up even with tlj's crazy rules of luke shutting himself off from the force because that seemed to me like it was the deliberate choice he makes in that movie, mechanically. So I'm willing to give him a little bit more space than that. Kenobi needs these abilities. He spends, what is it, two and a half episodes not using his two greatest tools to defend. Okay, so a couple problems with this, all right? Also, something I left out on the Disney Star Wars point. Uh, this isn't just a Disney Star Wars point for someone to cut themselves off from the force if you've read the legacy comics which i don't think he has which there's no problem with that but there's this thing kate skywalker right really powerful cuts himself off from the force by using spices specifically dead death sticks just trying to stay away from the force as much as he can deaden himself deaden his senses as much as possible and also, what Mahler just said, just really just comes back to a, hey, you're not going to be as good as you once were when you leave a skill for that long amount of time. It's just not going to happen. It's impossible, at least in my eyes. And then protect the, the most important people in the universe to him, his yes. lightsaber and the force. Neither he uses, and it's just like... Are they going to give us a reason why? This is something we were talking about. It was like, oh, clearly they're saving him, igniting the lightsaber for like a really special moment. And one might say, well, he does it with Vader, right? And it's like, yeah, but do you see the way they do it? He's just like, oh, it's on now. You're like, oh. Oh, oh yeah. I, I hate That's this. Like, the, the director of this show is an absolute... <laughs> I don't even know. I don't think the, the, the word that I want to use, I can use on YouTube, or I'll just... So... I think it's a pretty important moment when Obi Wan finally does ignite his lightsaber. It's meant for him to show that he's like scared of Vader because who wouldn't be? He's terrifying, especially when you know he's Anakin and you know what Anakin can do and you've seen it. You've seen the recordings from the security cameras at the Jedi Temple. You've seen him in his duel on Mustafar, and then you see him come back from what you did to him there. You saw him burning, missing all, all of his limbs at like, well, all of his outer extremities, I guess you could say. Uh, missing parts of all his limbs is the best expression I guess I could come up with for that. But that's still like a crazy thing. Like the shock of that, it, I feel is really shown pretty well with him igniting his lightsaber, but maybe I'm just interpreting it wrong. Get demonetized instantly. <laughs> they they are a person lacking somewhat in artistic skill. I'll say it that way. Um, I, I don't want to. No, I don't want to jump to this bit yet because there's there's a lot earlier on that I want to just cover first before we get to the the true idiocy of this episode uh, and the wasted opportunities, but. You know, before we even get to that, the, 
how can I even describe Kenobi as a character? He is sad now. He doesn't know how to use the Force anymore. Um, he doesn't know what to do. He has to be helped. He has to be directed around by other people. Um, he's a bit of a pathetic old man. What does that remind us of, gentlemen? Mm. I, I, I can think of a movie that... Okay, so before he gets into his Luke point, um, obviously Kenobi's going to be sad. I mean, he's seen people that he grew up with all of his life. All of a sudden, they're all just gone, right? And the guy that he considered a brother, that he loved, is now an evil person. And he just found that out. And not only that, I mean, there's just all these bad things. You know, he's trying to look over Luke, and Owen hates him, right? There's just this feeling of dread that anyone would have when you're trying to help out the galaxy and literally it feels like pretty much everyone is against you there's going to be a level of sadness to that jedi or not and a character within that movie that it definitely reminds me of hmm. um, i just why do they have to do this to to all of these it's, characters isn't that great it's like you see, Han Solo, last we saw him, was still alive, and so we could just turn him into that. Luke was still alive. We could turn him into that. Obi-Wan was like, oh, he's dead. Fuck, what do we do? Is there any gaps in his history that we could use and turn him <laughs> into it? It's like, yes, yes, there is, yes! And it's like, yes! It doesn't even make Okay, so this is another example of the thing I brought up in my review of the first two episodes, which is Aang Syndrome where people have this view of this character as this moral, like, superior, almost. Maybe that's not the right term for it, but that's what we're going to go with. And they see him in this different light. Maybe it's later on in the series, or, well, it actually always is later on in the series, whether it's Han leaving Leia, or Luke not being as good as he should be, and just completely being a completely different person from what we saw at the end of Return of the Jedi and Obi-Wan now I mean for Luke I understand why he's so you know sad it's very over the top he shouldn't have tried to kill Kylo but this isn't the video for that Obi-Wan I've been over this like twice so I'm not even gonna get into that Han Solo yeah that's weird uh, I <laughs> We'll probably be here for like an hour if I start ranting about that. Makes sense though. At the end of episode three, he wasn't like this. He's like, oh yeah, don't worry. I'll go off. I'll protect Luke. I'll train. So his entire life work now is to protect Luke. And that means you're going to have to fight Vader. If Vader came for Luke, you have to be able and in a condition to protect oh, you. It doesn't right, matter yeah. how sad you are or what you're suffering with. Um, This is probably the most confusing part for me. When... At the end of episode 3, Obi-Wan isn't aware of Vader. He doesn't know that Vader's alive. He thought Anakin died there. That's so clear and obvious. So no, he doesn't know that he's going to have to fight Vader. That's just wrong. And I know this video is mainly about Critical Drinker and a little bit about Mahler, but I think that guy's just completely wrong with that statement. How, how would he know? about Vader. I mean, maybe like a disturbance in the Force, but that would be like indicated in the show or in, in the movie or maybe indicated in the flashback in the show. You've got to put that aside and focus on your mission. And he can't be bothered because he's, he's basically sitting in his own pit of self-pity in a cave somewhere and can't even be bothered to train. No, but no, Dispero, you, you're, you're laboring under the misapprehension that Luke is important. He's not now. No, it's no. Like Leia. <laughs> we got Leia now. Luke's we fine. we literally have a character say that Leia is just as important as Luke. Don't you know? It's like so, Luke's fucking isn't. <laughs> hey, she's I also, got a message uh, she's got to carry. I feel like. Um. Well, I mean. Okay. Let Let me verbalize this in a good way. I don't know why I said verbalize like that, but anyway. Um. In terms of like, in universe perspective like either one of them could have gone and faced vader and been trained as a jedi it just happened to be luke so like to us to me luke is 10 times more important than leia 
But in universe, I mean, there is another. There's a reason they said that line, because if Luke had failed, if he had been killed in Empire Strikes Back, then Leia could have been trained and would have been fighting like we see her in the Force Unleashed 2 cutscene. Or not the cutscene in in the game. Jeez. Broke a cardinal rule for um, lightsaber duels between Jedi and Sith. One of them picks the other up with the Force, and it, they can't do anything. It's like you can't you can't do that because if you do, it sets a rule. You can never, you have, do you can never not do it then if you can. Yeah, because you that, really. it's an it's always been a question for fans. Like, why don't they do that in the middle of fights? And we just go. You know, it's 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 like they cancel each other out. You try to grab them with the force, and and they'll they'll be able to counter that with their force ability or something like. That. But no, they just show it happen here, and it's like, oh well, man, this seems like the kind of thing you should have been doing a lot of in the day, you know? Okay, so this is a good question and a good point to bring up. Now in Legends, it is established that the reason for them being able to not do that to each other is the fact that. They both have they both have casual force barriers up, and so the reasoning for me in my head is that Obi Wan was just so scared and like just trying to stave off Darth Vader and get away from him that he wasn't thinking to put up his force barrier or he just forgot how to do it. Honestly, because I mean we see things sort of into this nature, like like when Dooku struck out at Anakin with force lightning, and I know that's a different ability but still like maybe if Anakin had had his barrier up he could have staved it off for a minute and then blocked with his lightsaber but because he just wasn't using his barrier or just was so focused on hey I gotta charge at Dooku and I gotta take this guy down that he wasn't focused right and that's part of the reason why Grievous can fight against force willing assailants because if you really think about it you know even though Grievous has a supercomputer connected to his brain, he's still like a machine, and these people have the force. So what Grievous has to do is he has to use fear and intimidation on him. They need to be on his side. You know if you've seen the Clone Wars miniseries. And because he has these factors on his side, these Jedi are so overwhelmed that they're not able to use their abilities. They're not able to focus, stop, put down their lightsaber, stretch out their hand, and lift them up and crush him. Because they just don't do that. And the time when he gets ambushed in the Clone Wars miniseries, he gets his chassis crushed. Because oh, Mace Windu had time to focus and he could take him down. So it just really comes down to more of a focus issue. And... In this instance, Vader had time to focus on Kenobi. Kenobi didn't have a force barrier up, and boom. Yeah. Um, but they had to have their incredible payoff of, you burned me, so I'm going to burn you now. No, more. Leave, leave this for a little bit. <laughs> we'll get to that. Don't worry. We will get to that. Um, who's protecting Luke right now? This is a very valid question. Uh, no one, because Luke isn't important. Uh, yeah, in the context of Uncle Owen. He's not important now. You don't have to worry. Okay, so... Vader's probably not going to go to Tatooine. And, in fact, he won't go to Tatooine just because he doesn't want to have those memories dragged back up. Now, for, he's right. Nobody's actively protecting Luke other than Owen. But, I mean... Obi-Wan's even been banned off of the Lars family residence, so how much protecting can he really do from where he is right now? Very little, you know? There's just not much he could really do other than watch from afar. And again, Vader's not going to come there. The Inquisitors aren't going to go there because they don't know about Luke. There's no reason for them to be there. Playing toy ships with them is fine. Yeah. Fuck this show. <laughs> they keep Fuck getting it and every person associated with it because I hate it. I hate everything that they're doing with it. Alrighty, so we're going to head to the second video I want to talk about. Alrighty, so now we have Why Disney are desperate to defend. Imagine Drinker. If the point here is that Kenobi is all like 
cowardly and stupid and whatever else you want to do. Imagine pairing him with a kid who feels that exact same way through their circumstance, and Kenobi's got to convince her to get out of that shell, to be strong, and in so, gives it to himself. Because it's an important thing. I think that would be really interesting, and maybe even better than we got. I don't know. It depends on who would direct. But no, he's going to... I'm expecting, because we've got so little time, episode four or five, we're going to be getting the showdown between him and Reva, and Reva's going to tell him he fucked up. He completely fucked up all of in the prequels, and he needs to apologize. <laughs> He'll be like, "Yeah, sorry about that." But you should be nice. Then she'll be like, "Fine, I'll rescue Luke for you." Yeah, we. So, Obi Wan did mess up, right? And part of it was like he just wasn't equipped for the kind of student that Anakin was, and that's why we talk so much. You know, a lot of people online do, at least about how Qui-Gon probably would have been a better suited teacher for Anakin, or maybe even someone like Mace, somebody who's more strict, or in Qui-Gon's case, like more in tune with the Living Force, would have taught Anakin how to sort of deal with that darker side a little bit better than Obi-Wan did. Um, we, we, we mocked this, right? Before this show even came out, we talked about this, and we said, this is going to culminate in Reva having either Obi-Wan or Luke at her mercy. She'll have beaten everyone and she's got the opportunity to win everything and she'll then have her change of heart and be like, no, I can't do this. Um, I have to I have to turn to the light side and she'll she'll protect Luke. Um, and essentially what they're doing then is saying like... I don't think they've set that up at all. It wouldn't make very much sense for them to do that. I, I don't even know why they would do that, but... Everything that happened in the Star Wars OT is because of this one diverse female space Jesus who's just like Michael Burnham from Star Trek. That's that's what they're setting her up as. I guarantee it. That's why they've that's why they've come out so fucking hard to defend this character and this actress because they know exactly what they're gonna do with her. Yeah, and they've No, I, I think they've come out to defend her because she's been the victim of multiple attacks on Instagram and more than likely other platforms that were just completely out of line. Check out my video on that if you want more information. But it's going very to be likely, retcon to end all retcons, I guarantee you. They very likely already killed her as well, like as writers. They probably, because they need her story to end well before it gets to the OT. Um, so she probably martyrs, right, in some way, shape, or form, which is kind they, of awkward with how much they're desperately defending her. Because they're gonna be like, like they will be the ones who kill her. This will be her, and then they'll make a prequel show or some shit. They they know. need you to they need you to love her like by the end of it, and they you know they the, the not the problem again. Uh, they haven't set her up as a sympathetic figure at all, at least in my eyes. Uh, I don't know what you might think, but to me at least, it doesn't seem like she's a very sympathetic person. Um, I don't care if she protects Luke by the end of this show. Look at the, look at the horrible shit she's done. And what's her reason? Because she hates Kenobi for abandoning the kids in, in the temple or some bullshit like that. Oh, yeah, is... That's what got me about the start. She came... Yeah, that would, that would be really bad. Uh, this, this one hasn't been as, you know, disagreeable as the last one. But uh, I, I'm sure we're going get, to get to some points later on that I won't exactly jive with. Came out and said... Oh, it's so amazing to be in Star Wars. Now I can be someone that young girls look up to as a role model. But, I'm like, you're evil. Have you, you seen what you're doing? How are you're you a space to be a role Nazi. Model? Yeah, we shouldn't be looking up to you. You're horrible. <laughs> it was incredible. It's like, this, I, this is yeah, the person I that I want everyone to be. But no, I, I mean, do you want me to spoil the ending for you? Based on the leaks that I've heard? Oh, we, we, uh, have we not talked about them before? Know, I've we... talked about them on Real BBC. I can't remember if we've talked about them yet. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm going off what I've seen on other channels, but yeah, like the 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 breakdown that I've heard is that she actually does have the chance to kill Luke, but she doesn't do it. Um, she reports back to Lord Vader that he's dead, and then Vader basically kills her with the Force. Yeah, and that is the end of her character. And and part of those leaks, though. What? Okay, that that really confused. Me. Okay. Uh, because why would Vader care that a random kid got killed? 
Now, now stick with me. Now, I'm sure that you've seen Empire Strikes Back. Now, very important, important detail is that Anakin is Luke's father. A very, very important detail. In fact, the most important detail. That's when Palpatine tells it to Anakin, is in that movie. This movie is set like 10 years before. Why would he care? That doesn't make any sense. Unless he... I Okay, so the line is the son of Anakin Skywalker. It is Darth Vader, of course. I, I, I can't even really process this and how it would work continuity wise it literally makes no sense i just given how the movies are i don't think they would do this it would contradict literally half the I, whatever i'm just gonna keep playing is they said that the reason he doesn't believe it is because obi-wan beat him so there's supposed to be like another fight where obi-wan's actually amazing i'm like i don't see how that's gonna happen I, he was so pathetic yeah. And the only I, I I really this I wouldn't be surprised if this happens. But if like something happens and Leia's like, no, I believe in you, Obi Wan. You can do this. And then you just CW like levels up in the yep. middle of a fight and suddenly uh, beats yeah. him. Right <laughs> well, he's not personally. Do you think that there are building up to a second fight? Now I don't think it's going to be that cheesy, but I do think he's going to sort of slip back into the oneness with the Force that sort of makes him so powerful. A big aspect of Kenobi's character is that he sort of really go with the flow when it comes to a fight, especially with Sarisa. So part of the reason why he's been so bad is because he's been so like, I got to control this and I don't know how to anymore because I suck now. And all he has to do, right, is just center himself, like just meditate again, probably just talk with master yoda and it would make sense for his character it wouldn't make sense for anakin because anakin would take like a year to get back because he, that's not how he fights but for kenobi where his fighting is hey i'm gonna let the force guide my blade i'm gonna slip closer and closer into a oneness state with the force it would make complete sense for him to be able to sort of come back okay. he's not gonna do it by himself like he is not no, gonna no, no, like no. discover his own strength, uh, even though he shouldn't have lost it in the first place because he fucking killed Anakin or he defeated Anakin when he was at the height of his powers. Now he's just some fucking like burned corpse inside a suit. Like he he's, he shouldn't be because he fucking killed Anakin or he defeated Anakin when he was at the height of his powers. Now he's just some fucking like burned corpse inside a suit. Like, he's, he shouldn't be any kind of threat to Obi-Wan. He should easily be able to take him on. And where better to start than Darth Vader? He's basically the quintessential movie villain. Right from the first moment he strides onto that rebel ship, surrounded by dead bodies, you know this guy isn't fucking around. In fact, George Lucas played just about every trick in the book to make you afraid of this guy. He's huge and powerful, he's dressed all in black armor, his face is hidden behind an inhuman mask, so you've got no idea what he actually looks like, and he speaks with a deep booming voice that just seems to radiate power and menace. Where are those transmissions you intercepted? What have you done with those plans? Shit man, he can even throw people around like ragdolls. Physically, he's big and intimidating, but he's also intelligent and ruthlessly efficient, making smart, logical decisions based on the information he has, and almost never losing his cool. For example, he uses his force powers to punish subordinates who fail or disrespect him, but it's never done out of anger or malice. He's either proving a point to men who doubt his power, or removing ineffective commanders who compromise the success of his mission. When Vader acts, it's always in service of a higher goal, and never because he's lost control of himself. The overall effect here is to create a villain that you absolutely would not want to fuck with. A man who basically dominates every situation and plows through every opponent over three movies right until the final act. It's because he fucking killed Anakin, or he defeated Anakin when he was at the height of his powers. Now he's just some fucking, like, burned corpse inside a suit. Like, he's, he shouldn't be any kind of threat to Obi-Wan. He should easily be able to take him on. So, I don't know 
what changed the drinker's mind uh, between when he made this this clip and when uh, what Wednesday, Thursday, like a couple days ago. I don't know what changed his mind from thinking Darth Vader was, you know, the ultimate to oh, well, you know, he sucks. It's weird. But now he's he's terrified of him, and he doesn't have the force anymore, and he's a pathetic we, old man. Are we allowed uh, to talk about that scene now? <laughs> I am. <laughs> yeah. Like chomping so, at the bit. Wait, let's just I, go into it. Let's just I go. Almost to, uh, <laughs> I almost want to show you the clip. It's so funny. When he first turns up, we, we at EFAB were like, oh god, here it is. This is the part we've been warning about for two years. What's going to happen? Vader and Obi-Wan, they've met up. And then Obi-Wan just goes, it runs away. <laughs> yeah. Like, what the? That, fuck? No, that's the fight, though. It it's <laughs> scene after scene of like Obi Wan sees Vader, then he runs away, runs like a hundred yards, and then they have another little confrontation. And then he it's... runs another hundred yards, and it's always in just some fucking like generic sandy landscape. There's nothing interesting going on. It's, a quarry. it's the biggest waste. He runs like layer as well. Two characters you could ever expect. Dude, it was the funniest shit. Like, it yeah. So uh, this is something that really comes down to personal interpretation. Uh, I can't really be like, oh, well, you gotta see it like this, or you gotta see it like that. You know, if you, you want to see it like as if it's, you know, just him running away, which I mean, it makes sense because he's scared and he doesn't want to face the guy they burnt. He would. He ran away when. Uh, the last time he saw him, because he he was hoping that he was dead, right? But he didn't finish it because he was scared. He was worried. And he also saw Palpatine landing. That was part of it. But you know, still, it, it's seriously filmed like it's supposed to be funny. He crosses yeah. path. He goes past like a little mound of whatever. Vader's just standing there, like, "What the fuck, bro?" And then it just cuts to Kenobi walking. He's like, "Well, there we go." Can I just say it? Jokes are complicated in discussion. This is because we can't tell people what they find funny. But when you break jokes down, certain elements can be measured. I, like many other as well, like when we're talking about Reva, like I know there's been a, a big old, um, you know, controversy around the actress, how she's apparently been warned that she's going to face a lot of racist backlash and stuff like that. Um, th this really feels like premature gaslighting on mm -hmm. the part of the company. It's like we know you're not gonna like this character because she's horribly written. So we're just gonna we're just gonna attach that big old R word to, to anything associated with her. And so if you do Why? Why would they why would they care? I mean you know when Hayden Christensen got attacked, it wasn't racist attacks for the most part, you know. I mean, there have been, like, people that have gotten, you know, racist attacks from Star Wars fans, quote-unquote, like Kelly Marie Tran, you know, her, how much she was harassed was, of course, like, a big thing. That's, uh, a lot of people have talked about already, and a lot of people have made a lot of great videos about, but this is something that happens, and for him to wave it off, again, I do enjoy him i enjoy what he does but it just feels really weird critique her in the slightest way you're gonna get tarred with that brush it's the it's the most like underhanded like patently obvious tactic imaginable and yet they're still doing it and they're still getting away with it i just don't know how they can how they can do this shit that's um, why I really like this episode, because this episode, she's barely in it, she barely influences anything, and it's still awful. My biggest problems about this are Leia, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and Vader. Like, she doesn't even really factor into them. She does some stupid stuff, but nothing on their kind of scale. And so, yeah, it and kind of destroys their entire argument, really, when it comes to that. Like, she does a bit of teleporting, but to be fair, pretty yeah. much everybody does. So, it's like, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll reserve judgment. Okay, the teleporting point teleporting point is a good point that I will agree with. It's weird how she teleports. I don't understand what's going on there, but yeah, I, don't, I don't know. Judgment until I've seen the, the next three episodes to see what 
her character ultimately ends up doing. Yeah. Like I say, I suspect that they are preemptively trying to guard against this because they know that uh, they're trying to do this crazy redemption arc for her character. They're going to want you to like her by the end. And I think somehow they know you're not going to. And so they're just going to guilt you into liking her. You know, it's like, if you if you don't like this character by the end, it's because you're a big old R word, you know? I well, mean, yeah, that's so what the conversation online's become now, uh, which is a real fucking shame because of how shitly written this is, ir irrespective of Reva as a character. Yeah, so I don't really involve myself with um, those types of conversations. I mostly involve and don't involve myself with Star Wars discussions online because they're normally either uh, really toxic or really stupid. Um, other than like, you know, mostly on YouTube, it's pretty good. But yeah, so I wouldn't know whether or not these guys are right. I, I mean, obviously there is going to be some level of, oh, if you don't like this character, you're racist. Because that is prevalent with a lot of characters uh, like Amber from Invincible, you know. People were like, oh, you know, if you don't like this character, then clearly you're a racist person when that's just not true. But, hey. Yeah. But that was the entire point of doing it. Yeah, I think that was the point, the, yeah. Yeah, to shift the debate. The thing is, you could have her as just the sole character for the next three hours. There's no way you can redeem her for what she's done. Like, it, it, it's impossible. She, she yeah, could go out and live the rest of her life setting up various I, I, different I charities and helping the universe. She's not going to redeem herself from the, the horrible no. thing she's done in the series. Now, I'm not 100% sure on this person, Disparu. Disparu, I, I hope I'm saying the name right, because uh, the drinker says it uh, like once or twice, and I think he even said it like 10 or 15 minutes ago. So, uh, yeah, but I... I mean, Anakin did like pretty much on the same level or worse stuff. I mean, he was doing like horrible stuff in the town in the last episode. Forget the Jedi Temple, and he still gets redeemed. And I'm per I don't think there's a single person like who's being serious that's like, oh, Anakin wasn't redeemed at the end of Return of the Jedi. Just, just something I wanted to throw out there. I mean, I, I think you you probably can. Um, bring back a character from doing horrendous things, like if there's some kind of um, backstory for it, though. Like, you can, you know, they, they did it obviously with Vader to some extent. I just don't think they have the writing skill to be able to pull it off in a show like this. I, I just think that I actually didn't watch the second half of the video, so uh, I wasn't talking at this point, or maybe, maybe I did and I just didn't remember. They're going to rely on, like, well, she was just good all the time. Okay. Don't question to be, it. To She's be fair. just a good character. Like her. Alrighty, that wraps it up. So, uh, let me know what you think. Uh, this video was a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. I expected it to be, like, 15, 20 minutes, and it's clearly not uh we're at 49 minutes right now so probably gonna be around 45 47 just depending on how this gets edited which is gonna take a while hope it gets out today but anyway i appreciate you all for watching you know i really appreciate uh mauler and the drinker uh i tried to keep my uh, criticisms you know focused around the points you know i when I made that comparison of what the drinker was saying now about Vader and what he's referring to him as, you know, maybe like a couple months earlier, you know, it's not trying to say that like he's a liar, it just is like saying that he's not being consistent with his points, you know. Uh, but anyway, I do appreciate you all for watching, especially if you're here for this long. Bye.